Oh, we're at it again. We are upgrading auto steer one more time, but this probably will be the last time. Long story short, all the stuff that you see scattered out behind me on the ground, this is stuff that we bought from a gentleman that we met at the uh, Nebraska Husker Harvest Days. And uh, so the same show we went up there to, to look at that trailer and stuff. This is where we ended up with this stuff. He, uh, he told me what he had and, and mailed it all to me. And I got a really good deal for it. So I'm not going to disclose it to you guys, but I paid less for all of this stuff than I did for the original set that I got um, when we put auto steer in this 8030 to begin with. So check this out. We have a FMX 1000. We have multiple globes. So that one is that one's a hurricane, a Trimble hurricane. That one is a AG, an AG25 by Trimble. And then it's got a couple of steering motors and a couple of, of the uh, terrain controllers. And last but not least, it did come with a, where's that? It's another steering controller, but this is the older style one. I don't think it will work is because I've plugged it in a couple of times and didn't get it to work with this one, but I'm going to try it with the other one and see if it'll work with it. And then this is a, oh, I think it's an easy guide 150 or something like that. Obviously this one's case branded, but same thing. Trimble made those for them too. Came with several wires, but I am missing a couple of the other wires that I do need. However, uh, chances are the new system that they got probably used the same cables, and so they just didn't send them. Like I said, for the price, I couldn't beat it, so let's get this stuff installed. Yes, even though we park these in a barn, we still keep them covered, like on this one anyways. The other tractor I don't keep covered because it's a cab tractor. This basically keeps it to where I don't have to worry about chickens crapping on them. Um, you know, if there was a leak in the ceiling on the barn, I wouldn't have to worry about it getting this. And then it also keeps the dust out because our barns have, uh, oh, some people call it turkey litter, but it's basically just really fine gravel. That really fine gravel has, it creates a lot of dust going in and out of there, especially with the skid steer. And uh, this helps keep it out of those electronics. Removing this one is super easy because we had it set up to where we could pop it off and throw it in the combine. So it's literally as simple as unplugging this wire down here, which I've already unplugged that provides our power, and then taking my remote with me, and that's it. So this one was set up very simply. That's, that's literally it, it's done. It's actually really crammed in this cab, so I did most of it without videoing because I wouldn't have got a good shot anyways. However, on this one, it is very simple. We're gonna unplug a couple of things, cut a couple of uh, zip ties, and we'll be out of there. Now you've heard our spiel about why we use auto steer on our farm and the efficiency increase that it really does give us. Long story short, we're taking the monitor that used to be in the 8030, which is this CFX 750, and we're just putting it on this tractor. Now the Easy Guide 500 that was on this tractor, um, we're actually going to sell that to a neighbor. They were really interested in having GPS guidance. And uh, ultimately our, our other plan was just to throw it in the combine but we really don't need to do that because we can do the same thing with this one and it's pretty simple to just swap it back and forth. We're going to set it up in the same manner that we had the other one. You've seen how quick it was to pull it off. This one's going to be a little bit different because it is going to have the easy steer terrain compensator. It's going to have the easy steer motor. Now those things are going to stay on here. They won't go to the combine. Um, not because, you know, it would be more efficient in the combine. However, on the combine side of things, because our ground is so uneven and, and, has really big terrain changes, it is really best that we are completely driving it and focused and not using auto steer at all, even in, though we're, you know, we're watching the feed of things. Long story short, it is just simply better to go slow with our combine. Cutting hay and raking is a very different situation because it is, we can go as fast as a tractor will let us basically. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is pretty simple. I'm literally just gonna mount this thing and kind of see what we like and what we don't like as far as this. Now I like to use the shortest cables possible and you can see that both of these are the same length so it doesn't matter which cable I use for the antenna and as a matter of fact if I use the old one right here it's still the same length as well so really irrelevant. Same thing the easy steer controllers those cables are all going to be the same as well so we're going to leave all that stuff it doesn't matter which one we pick. What I am going to do is I'm going to use the grungy looking cable the one that's all curly cued and everything else because I know that this one works for a fact, this good looking one right here. So we're gonna leave it alone and keep it as a spare. Same thing for that antenna. I know that antenna, that hurricane one works, but I am gonna use my AG25 um, on this tractor. So we'll have the AG25 on both of them. 
Well, the next part of this is a little bit different and I'm just bringing it to your attention because it is going to matter depending on the machine that you're putting this on. So you can see that this is a much smaller uh, or designed to go over a much smaller column, but it's still too big for the column that I have. You can see this one is even bigger and is definitely not going to work for this column. And you might have to make your own bracket setup. That is what I did on the other tractor. So it's very possible I have to do the same thing here. So unfortunately, I was not able to make any of the other brackets work that came with all the pieces I bought. So what I did was I took the I took a couple pieces from the 8030 because the 8030 was in a position where it's a lot easier to make some adjustments by cutting and welding than in this situation. But this is how I have this one mounted and it actually just sits right up here on top. Pretty simple and then you pull this pin right there and then you can let it go and it'll be right here on my steering wheel and if you look it's lined up very well. Push that away and now it's out of the way and I'm back to being able to drive normally with nothing touching my fingers or, or you know, kind of pinching them as I go across. You can leave this against it and it won't hurt your fingers by any means, but it is inconvenient. I ended up putting the terrain compensation module down here and as this is slanted, obviously you can see that it's not, you know, that would be straight across. So roughly like a 60 degree angle. I did calibrate the actual monitor for it. That way it's reading it correctly and it's making the appropriate corrections. If you change any of the mounting surfaces ever for your terrain compensator, make sure that you do a calibration. Now outside of here, you can tell it does not look very tidy and it's not going to. The reason for that, this tractor is going to get split here probably in about a month. We need to do some power shift clutches and a few other things. So we're not gonna make the effort to run this underneath like it's actually going to be. But this cable right here, all of it is going to run underneath of here, under the batteries, and then it's going to come up right back there. Uh, you probably saw it earlier, but there's a hole in the floor where I can pop things up right through there. Now the 8030 is a little bit more complex because this monitor is just, it's massive, but it's nice. Don't get me wrong. Other than that, all the wires are hidden the exact same. This was a very easy install. The only thing we had to change in here was a cable. Um, the cable that was in here needed to go with the CFX 750, but this CFX 1000 has a different style cable and we actually had to modify the other one a little bit. But this is what I was talking about with the bracket. I was able to get one that'll fit the actual um, steering column. I wasn't able to get one that had the appropriate length. So you can probably see, I think you can see right here, we've cut it, we've welded it, and then we painted it. But this one, it still lines up and everything like it's supposed to and it's gonna work just fine for what we're after. It doesn't line up exactly perfect like the other one does. So you can see if I release that and then I let this go against the wheel, you can see there's a little bit of a discrepancy. It should be, it should definitely be a little higher um, and we can always adjust this a little bit. Overall, the biggest headaches you're gonna have when installing these older systems is, the biggest headache is definitely gonna be finding cables. So if if it doesn't come with the power cable, man, that, that one that one's a pretty big struggle because they don't make these cables anymore. And when you find them used, they're usually pretty expensive, even though they're used because folks know that they're just not made anymore. Outside of that, the brackets, yeah, they can be a little tedious, but they're pretty easy. You know, you can cut them, you can weld them, you can make it to where it'll work, or you can even call Trimble and they actually have these brackets. Um, you can buy them. I think it was like $230 or something like that for the brackets. For specifically for this tractor and specifically for that tractor. Well, I didn't want to spend, you know, almost $500 on that. So I just cut and welded mine to make everything work. That one actually didn't have to cut and weld at all. Um, just had to mix and max match the pieces to make sure that it clamps to the column. Well, this one I did cut and weld like we talked about, but you're going to see this work um, with this manure spreader back here. And when we do that, we'll actually do our calibrations and everything as well. That one is calibrated but it's not field ready yet. Like I said, we've got to split it. So I didn't spend a whole lot of time on getting it right. I just wanted to test and make sure everything worked. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a blessed week. And remember, if you're going to talk about somebody, talk to God about them.